Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to build an automatic lava farm for your Minecraft world. This design uses a piston rotation system to push around the cauldrons so they can fill up with lava. Before we get into the tutorial, these are some of the resources that you will be required to use to build this lava farm. To kickstart this tutorial off, we're going to start by grabbing our cauldrons. We're going to want to place 11 cauldrons in a row. Now that we've placed our first 11, we're going to skip a block and then come one block to the right and place another 11. We can now repeat that exact same process for the remaining two sides, so skip a block, place your cauldron, and make another line. This is what your cauldron placement should look like from above. We now want to grab our temporary blocks, which we are using dirt. So we're going to start by building up two blocks, place a deep slate brick on top of that. This can be any building block of your choice. I'm just using deep slate to show you that it works in 1.18. And then what we can do is completely wrap this on top of the cauldrons all the way around the perimeter. Now that we've completed that perimeter, we can go ahead and place a temporary dirt block here, build up a block just like this. We can remove that dirt block and then we can create another perimeter around this area, one block higher, just as I'm doing right here. We now want to do the exact same thing to the left side because this channel here is where we're going to put our lava. So we're going to want to place a temporary block here, a building block, remove that temporary block, and then we can simply wrap this all the way around the perimeter, all the way around. So we have a one block deep gap all the way around. We now want to grab whatever buckets we have around our base or house, and we want to fill this entire area up with lava source blocks, which means we can't have flowing lava running through here. We need to have lava source blocks on every single one of these blocks, as then the dripstone will drip down lava and will fill up these cauldrons with lava, in which case we'll push them along and pick them up. So I highly recommend going to the nether, finding a lava lake, filling up your buckets and coming back, and filling them up through here. Now that we have this area complete, we can go ahead and jump down, remove our temporary blocks everywhere, and we can now begin work on this area down here. Moving on, our pointed dripstone is our next agenda. So we're going to want to place pointed dripstone on all of these blocks all the way across here so the lava can drip down into the cauldrons. Make sure you put a dripstone block here too, as once we move these pistons along, this block will become more relevant. We now want to grab our pistons, observers, our redstone dust, and our deep slate bricks, as we're going to work on a little bit of redstone. This step can get a little bit tricky, but pay attention to what I do and what I say, and I'll help you through it. So now we want to go ahead and skip a block here and place a piston facing this way. We can then come behind that piston and place an observer facing the same way, making sure the arrow is facing away from the farm. We can then go ahead and grab a deep slate brick, place it behind the piston, place a redstone dust behind the observer, and a redstone dust on top of the deep slate brick. Now you're probably wondering how that is even difficult. It's the next step that tends to grab a few people. So what you need to do is make sure that you keep this in a clockwise or an anti-clockwise direction. It doesn't matter as long as you keep it that way and not push them into each other. So what this means is you do not want to have a piston this way, as it will just push back into that piston. Instead, you want to keep the flow going and place a piston facing this way so when the cauldrons get pushed over here, they then get pushed forward and then pushed around. So we'll do a couple more together just to make sure that you understand it. So place an observer here, making sure the arrow is away from the farm, a block, redstone and redstone. Coming around again, we want to make sure that we push it this way right here. 
we can then remove that, sorry, and then place an observer facing that way, a block, a redstone, and a redstone. As you can see, this is keeping in a clockwise direction. So for the very last one, we want to place a piston on this end right here. And then we can go ahead and place an observer, a block, redstone, and redstone. Now, once this is mobile and moving, you will notice that this will move in a clockwise direction. And if you've got it in anti-clockwise, it doesn't really matter as long as it moves. You do not want them butting into each other though, otherwise it will not work. For those out there that are still a little bit confused of what I mean, here's a bird's eye view of what it should look like from above. Choosing one of our four sides of our lava farm, we want to come along and dig out a three by two area, one block deep. We can now go ahead and grab our double chests, place a double chest here and here, and then we can go ahead and place a single hopper facing into that chest. We can then go ahead and place a slab here, and then we can go ahead and place a comparator facing this way with a redstone dust on the opposite side, just like this. Next to that redstone dust you just placed, we're going to place a dropper. Behind that dropper, place a hopper facing into that dropper, making sure that left hand side right there is into that dropper. If you want to test it further, drop an item and check the dropper to make sure it's inside. We can then go ahead and place a double chest on top of these. Now with the help of an iron farm, we want to grab and make as many buckets as we can and dump them into these chests. As you can see, it will slowly fill up this dropper, and once we start collecting the lava, the dropper will dispense more out to us while we're right-clicking, making this farm AFKable. We now have a fully operational lava farm, kind of. What you need to do next to make this start to run is you need to go ahead and place a cauldron here, place a lever, and turn on the lever. As you can see, they are now rotating around. Before we start AFKing this farm, we want to make sure that we fill up our inventory with placeholder blocks so that no lava buckets get jammed in here. So we are now ready to start farming some lava, so we're going to grab some buckets, jump onto this slab right here, start holding right click. As you can see, every time we hold right click, it will dispense another bucket for us, and the lava bucket will get picked up by that hopper and go into our double chest right here. As you can see, very quickly, we've got a total of 10 lava buckets accumulated over a bit of time. Obviously, this has been sitting around since we've built this farm, so it will slow down over time. But you should expect somewhere around 110 lava buckets per hour. So which would mean you need to extend these chests downwards with hoppers to extend the space. If you want to, while AFKing this farm, you can simply press F3 and T while holding right click. And once this screen comes up, let go. And now I'm not even touching my mouse. And as you can see, the lava bucket is dispensing from the cauldrons into my lava bucket and going into that chest. So I'm not even touching my mouse at the moment. It's doing it itself. You can also simply just set a keybind, press a letter on your keyboard, and it will do the exact same thing. Now to turn off this lava farm as it is quite noisy, you want to go ahead, place a lever here, flick it on, and it will stop it. To start it again though, you need to go ahead, grab this cauldron right here, and then go ahead, place it again here, and then flick that lever again, and it will begin to run the exact same way. You need to do this every time you want to start and stop the machine. So that is how you build an automatic lava farm in Minecraft. And if you found this video useful, it would mean a lot to me if you could leave a like on the video, and if you want to see more videos just like this one, be sure to subscribe. This design is owned by Chapman, so be sure to go check out their channel, the link will be in the description. So thank you so much for tuning into this video, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!